In this series of videos, we're going to be calculating the financial ratios for Coca-Cola during the 2006 fiscal year. We've got this information on the 2008 financial statements that are attached to the guided tutorial. So the first thing you're going to need to do is get out your guided tutorial for financial statement analysis and flip towards the back where we have the financial statements. In this first video, we're going to be collecting the data. The next couple videos will be actually going through and doing the calculations. So in looking at our list of financial ratios, there are several pieces of information we're going to need. Current assets, current liabilities, inventory, sales or revenues, and so on down the list. And all of these pieces of information are available on the financial statements that are attached in that handout. So the first thing we're going to do is just gather that information and that will make it easier for us when we get around to doing the calculations. So we're going to start with the current assets. Current assets, long-term assets, liabilities, everything associated with assets and liabilities can be found on the balance sheet. So the first thing we need is our Coca-Cola 2008 balance sheet. We're looking at the 2006 fiscal year. So we want to scroll down to total current assets and we'll see that listed as 8,441,000. Now this information is actually in thousands, so that is 8,441,000,000 in current assets for Coca-Cola during the 2006 fiscal year. Now we don't need all those zeros in there for our calculations, so when we write that number down, we're just gonna write it down as 8,441. So we have our current assets now, 8,441. Next we want our current liabilities. Current liabilities are also on the balance sheet. Total current liabilities, $8,890,000. Again, all we need are the 8890 because you can see everything in here as the three zeros at the end, so they're all going to cancel out. We're just writing down what we need. So 8,890 is what we need to write down for our current liabilities. Next up we want inventory. Inventory is a current asset, so that's also going to be found on the balance sheet. Let's go to our 2008 balance sheet, 2006 fiscal year. There we can see inventory, 1,641. Write that down. We have our inventory at 1,641. Our sales, our revenues, that's going to be on the income statement. So we have to get the income statement out. Top line on the income statement is revenues. Revenues are sales, 24,088,000. In our case, we're going to write down 24,088. So we now have our sales, our revenues recorded at 24,088. Next is accounts receivable. Accounts receivable is a current asset, so we've got to go back to the balance sheet. We want the 2008 balance sheet. Now in the Yahoo Finance method, instead of calling it accounts receivable, they use the term net receivables, but it's the same thing. You can see that net receivables, 2,704. Then we get that written down as our net receivables. Next up, we need net fixed assets. Net fixed assets are property, plant, and equipment. Sometimes they won't break that out in the balance sheet, and then you can just use long-term assets. But if property, plant, and equipment are provided, that's what we want to use. Here we look at our balance sheet, and we see property, plant, and equipment. 6903. Get that written down for our net fixed assets. 
Next up we have total assets. Again a balance sheet item. Total assets 29,963. Next up we need our liabilities and this would be total liabilities. Total liabilities are also on the balance sheet. Let's see total liabilities 13043. Next up on the list, we see EBIT, earnings before interest and taxes. Earnings before interest and taxes is on the income statement. So now we need to go back to that 2008 income statement. We're looking at the 2006 fiscal year. And as we scroll down the list, we see earnings before interest and taxes. That's what we want, that EBIT. And that is 6,798. Next up is interest. That's on the income statement. It's right below the EBIT. There's our earnings before interest and taxes. Right below it we see the interest expense. Interest expense is 220,000. So we're just going to write down the 220. And next we want depreciation. Now all of these pieces of information we found so far have been either on the income statement or balance sheet. Depreciation is the one item that we're going to get from the statement of cash flows. So now we need to get Coca-Cola's statement of cash flows. We have the Coca-Cola 2008 statement of cash flows. The item we want is depreciation. If we look at depreciation for that first year is 938,000, just the 938. So again, depreciation, 938,000. And that is on the statement of cash flows. Next we go back to net income. Net income is on our income statement. It's the bottom line there. You can see net income or you can use net income available to common shares. They're both the same thing. But that net income line is 5,080. Just have a few items left. Common equity. Common equity is the stockholder's equity. And that's going to be available on the balance sheet. Again, we want to flip back to Coca-Cola's balance sheet. That's near the bottom of the balance sheet. There's a section called Stockholders' Equity. Breaks it down into various segments. But what we want is this total stockholders' equity down here at the bottom. That's 16920 Next, we want the stock price. Now the stock price might not be available on financial statements. Here what I did is went on to Yahoo Finance and pulled up historical stock quote information and then added that to the income statement and balance sheet so it would be there when we were looking. But the stock price you can find from the balance sheet on your handout or from the income statement on your handout. Down at the very bottom we see market price of stock. $48.25. And now we're down to our last item. Last item is the number of shares outstanding. And again, I included that on both the income statement and the balance sheet. Number of shares outstanding right down here near the bottom. You can see that's 2,318,000. Again, drop the zeros off. So we have 2,318. Four shares outstanding. Uh, this is all the data that we're going to use to calculate those financial ratios 